Hey there. This is the voice of Barbara Heller. I always wanted to have a talk show that combined three of my favorite things. Parks, pastries, and talking big ideas with creative people. And if everyone worked on themselves. Welcome to People in the Park eating pastries. We chose Orwashers as the bakery to be paired with our guest, Rich Aronovich, because he is full of flavor, very cheery. And like the breads here at Orwashers, his hair is very fluffy. Must have. You cannot walk out without it. One, everything bagel. Our French butter croissant. Valrona double chocolate chip cookie. So it has uh, milk chocolate and dark chocolate. Our turn is my favorite. So there you go. She just filled that. I want to still do this. Like, how did it start? What's the fire? Well, uh, my family wants nothing to do with it. It's me. Oh. <laughs> just me. Was it you always know. just you? No. It's it was, always been me. Well, it was a family business up until 2007 when I took it over. Uh, the rugula, the bagels, the French baguettes, the rye bread. So we've captured the Eastern European. Uh, we do this unbelievable chocolate chip cookie. The croissants are really okay. the best thing outside of Paris. So we have a lot to offer here, not even to mention the coffee. I have chai tea, <laughs> but I'll take the coffee. Well, yeah. you have l'chaim. And what's inside? Everyone wants to know what's inside. I'm from a planet called Boca Raton, Florida. Okay. I was rising in a place where people were... Declined. Yeah, expiring. Seems like, here you are, and here they were. Yes, well, they look more like this, though. Here we'll do a typical one. I ordered an everything bagel, and you gave me a bagel with everything. I'm turning it to you now, but Please. have you feel like... Um, it's a chocolate because, because of the um, health kick, you've changed your products or you've introduced the no gluten or no whatever. No, we, well, for practical reasons, I couldn't do gluten free here. I could if I had a full time lawyer. How do you stay so trim but you're surrounded by carbs all day? Like, how does that happen? Well, if anyone's ever you know, ran a food business in New York City, uh, the amount of pressure that you have. Just keeping up with standards uh, and and you know uh, rising rents and rising payrolls and everything rising. else. Rising, you got to put bread on the table. Right. Um, this kind of reminds me of how when I got in trouble in fifth grade, my teachers would be like, "Go clap some erasers, Bob." Exactly. Talkative. See. And now I'm so talkative. I made a tour right. show. <laughs> Mom, not now. We went through a couple of things that I found today. And I'm leaving some feedback for my bakers tomorrow. Shove it in their face. You need to no, put no, no, more no, no. raisins. This, this is, is like, don't yeah, no, mess with was, this guy. That was from the Moyle. <laughs> right. So we can take this one. This is particularly flat. The one thing you will see. Okay. You'll see a pretty good crumb structure, but it's still oh, tighter than I like. This is called a crumb structure. Crumb. The inside is crumb. Hairy crumb structure. <laughs> So I know your show is about pastries, yeah. but this is this bread is some really good bread too. And on a cold day, it makes an excellent earmuff. Mom, I gotta go. I can't talk now. Four washers full of me. So hot right here. It is starting up at around 500 degrees. 500? No. Nobody's cold in our washers. No. It looks like it's from Back I'm, to the Future. It is probably somehow it is spying on us. This very well could be a little camera Russia. here. But you can see the temperature of the oven. You're at you know, 575 degrees, and that's the way we cook our pizzas, yeah. which you wouldn't think an old school Jewish baker is making pizzas, but pizzas. our pizza. Up here it actually says bread lab, because it it's like a science lab. lab. So it, exactly. What so is this thing? That's a divider. So that helps make a lot of these different You're so here. divisive. It's not right what you do. No, this is a centrist divider. Okay. Okay, so we're in the middle here. We're New, like New Yorkers. Like MSNBC. Well, we're, we're what's called a New York Democrat. The dough is shaped, placed on here, and it gets pushed into the oven. And then and when you have Barbies, you come in and you... <laughs> or horses? That is actually, that is sports there. You ever try using nylon burnish shields on something that's 500 degrees? Uh, no! It's yeah. so weird, I have it! You should try that. And then you can help me clean it up off the front of the oven for about four hours. So we took Keith Cohen's recommended treats and headed out to Riverside Park. Walking 
into the park with pastries. Me and a funny guy named Rich. Walk into Riverside. Walk into Riverside Pork. Pork? Jump over the wall. I don't know if I can. That's huge, beautiful wall. It's a beautiful wall. Look at this wall. Hey! Okay. Welcome back. This is Barbara Heller and Rich Aronovich. Well pronounced. Thank you so much. And there's a Richard right behind you. If you could just move. There is that what? Is. Richard and Rosalie Goldberg. We're in a park, people, and I wanted to give them a little hubbo, a little honor. Yeah, they were together for 50 years. Side by side from your loving family, May 12, 2013. You guys, whoever you are, nice family. And they're clearly dead. Anyway, we went to Oral Washers and they gave us great chai tea. And this is not Tai Chi chai tea. What do, get first? what do we got first? What is this? What does it smell like? What does it smell like? What is <laughs> what is it? Um, I bet it's a chocolate croissant. Do you want a little bit? Half. Oh, Look how it out. flakes out. Slow mo. Slow -mo. Food porn. I am. Yeah. Mmm. 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 There's crumbs every. Look at those crumbs. Flaky goodness. Are we talking about the pastries? I think so. This what is was, delicious. What was your favorite after school snack? My favorite after school snack? Was this? Your um, mom wasn't cooking um, this. No, no Jewish mother bakes. No offense, but they don't. Um, no, my favorite afternoon snack. My parents worked a lot because uh, they were gone a lot. So I was kind of fending for myself. And so Doritos. After. Okay. Oh, Doritos. Nacho Doritos and Oreos. They're not your Doritos, they're my Doritos. Exactly, and I have to say, that's still my favorite. Like, now, now it's this, but it was that. You know, Doritos, chocolate ganache, you know, croissant. What's the meaning of life, Rich? Why don't you start with a light question? <laughs> no, that's the purpose of this show. The, the meaning of life, besides pastries? Amazing food, yeah. Um, I can't get over our Wow, that's flake. that's like, really heavy. Flaking. I know. Um, whatever possesses a puppy. So, unconditional love. And bite. That is so sweet. I love that you... Oh, there's um, squirrels. Because we're in the park. Um, <laughs> speaking of cute for animals... Oh my gosh, trees! <laughs> ADD! <laughs> um, who was the person you looked up to the most when you were in fifth grade? Speaking of when you were a kid. In fifth grade? Yeah, or like, you know, in your K I mean, through five years. Formative, I believe they call them. Who did I look up to the most? Um, I would have to say Eddie Murphy. Mm. So on the way, when I was a kid, on the way to camp, of course, every, you know, I went to okay. camp, every, yeah, I went to Camp Judea in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And at that time, it was much more fun for me to go via train. So I went on the train and, I, and they would stop and I would meet some of the other campers. And I remember I was a little kid and they, this was Walkman years. Oh so yeah. So I, I had a cassette tape. But not tape. Discman, Walkman. No, Walkman. Before the, the compact. Yes. Okay. Right? And so it was Eddie Murphy Comedian. And they were like, listen to this. And it was the part where he talked about Stevie Wonder hitting a tree. And when he did that voice, oh, he did. Ha ha ha, very funny mother. That killed me. <laughs> I died laughing, and then this was the years where there was a, a where Lauren Michaels left Saturday Night Live for a while. So oh, it was Eddie Murphy saved that show, and it was Eddie Murphy, Billy Crystal, um, Christopher Guest, and I remember and Martin Short. But I remember Eddie Murphy, uh, and then in Hot Tub when he was doing yeah. the James Gumby, all of those. And so I clearly really... Gumby was one of your influences because yeah, clearly. <laughs> but um, who is your biggest influence? Like, what makes you? I want little... to do comedy, him? Um, I think it was the childhood trauma. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> there was a mime right. that almost touched me. No, um, it was, uh, I guess the Mount Rushmore's George Carlin, Richard Pryor, who really influenced Eddie Murphy, um, Dangerfield, Bill Hicks, uh, Robin Williams. Um, what is it that all of those people have in common that you think is the... Well, there's, there's different elements from each one, right? 
So like I love Steve Martin, I loved his silliness. I loved um, Bill Hicks' unapologetic point of view. I loved George Carlin's like, I, I have a point of view and now I'm silly. I have a point of view and now I'm silly. Uh, I love Robin Williams seemingly like, oh, he's an improv guy. Even though maybe some of it was planned, but it seemed like, oh, this is just off the cuff. And that's kind of like the style I like a lot. Um, and you have all of that in you. Okay. okay. Yeah, go, go right in front. That's great. Yeah, just right in front. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, no reason to go around. Um, what was your go-to shower song? Or what is it now? Go-to shower song? Yeah. Um, Crossing in Front of My Camera by, um, <laughs> by Clueless and the uh, Self-Obsessed. Uh, you know that group? They, they live mostly on the Upper West Side. Jeez Louise. Um, I don't know if I have... You'd be surprised. They, okay. It switches. Jimmy Ooh. Cliff. Okay. Paul Simon. Is there, can you but my but my my karaoke safety song <laughs> is Joe Cocker with a little help from my friend. Oh, uh, of course, your one friend. With a little help from my friend. Yeah, one friend. <laughs> okay, because you definitely shortened it. It used to be friends. To I, be... I have flakiness all over my lips. Yeah. Oh, you want to eat more pastries? We can wipe it off with more pastries. What's oh. the next one? Check it out. You and un- just throw it. Okay. Oh. If you could start any charity, what would it be? Well, or, or one that exists, but you want to like kind of take a... Starting a charity. Um, yeah, I think... It's funny, I've been thinking about this. There was a woman I just met. She saw me do comedy. And she said, this is an awesome charity. She said, this is what we do. There's underprivileged children. If they don't look a certain way, they can't go to school. So we buy them clothes. We give them shoes, socks, the whole nine. And, oh, and I like, thought you meant... There's underprivileged children. If they look a certain way, they don't get money. Like they don't. No, they won't let them go to school. No, no mock the children. That's fine. Mock the children. That's no, okay. No, no, no. It's okay. You you grew up with money. They didn't. It's fun no, to make I fun of them. Ha ha ha. I uh, actually now, was kind of poor. Yeah. For most of my life, for, including not. You don't know what poor is. Good true. Did you miss meals? Thank you. So, feel bad about yourself. So they give them all of these wonderful things so that they can go to school. They come back the next year, they're wearing literally the same socks as they did from the, what they gave them. They, they, they can't get a pair of socks. So they were like, will you do comedy for this? And I'm like, it better be five digits. No, I'm kidding. I was like, of course. <laughs> um, and then I guess the other one was the, big, the best show I ever did was there was uh, the, the station fund in Rhode Island that they had a pyrotechnics disaster that, that burnt down. And this woman came up to me after she said, I lost my daughter and you made me laugh and I feel like I can move on. Oh and I was God. like, wow, are you going to buy my CD or not? Because there's a line. Let's go. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm sure that's what you <laughs> no, said. I did not say that. It was very touching. And it was like, sometimes it's good to be, um, you know, that's kind of like the, the, oh, we're entertaining, you know, we're entertaining people, but we also can help. Yeah. Wow. Mic drop. Mic drop, uh, cookie drop. I have an issue that's close to my heart because my grandfather passed away when I was three and I asked my mom, why did he pass away? And she said, cause he smoked and he died. And he was like my favorite. He was my favorite. So I can't stand smoking. I love smokers. I just don't like it when they smoke, like the action. So how can we get people to stop smoking? Well, I'm an ex-smoker, which means I'm better than everybody. everybody. Um, what I always say is, I, it's funny because I used to smoke and then I, now I judge smokers. I'm like, what are you, suicidal and a procrastinator? Get it together. But, um, uh, you know, the problem is it's like... That's hilarious. Yeah. And I don't trust these electric cigarettes. Right. First of all, when they're sucking on that glow stick like they're in a rave, it's like, the point of smoking is to look and act cool. Like, you know what I mean? Like, go to someone like, hey. Like they're yeah, they're like, they're... <laughs> It's like, how can you be cool with an electric cigarette? Like when you smoke, you're like, hey, you got a light. Hey, electric cigarette, you're like, hey, you got an outlet? It's not the same thing. <laughs> you don't look cool. Um, I don't know how to get people to stop. Like, well, you, how did you stop? Uh, my pro- it was hard. Because the problem is that this, the... Was it when you got married? She was like, I'm out. Because that's what I, I would make an ultimatum. No. Um, the problem w- the, is that the, the tobacco companies hire chemists to have a... Chemists. Chemists. Not chemists. Chemists. Chemists or scientists who find um, 
find chemicals that literally that you're just you're detoxing from the chemicals and tobacco and nicotine. But there's like a thousand chemicals in each cigarette. And so, sugar. There's actual sugar. Yeah, they do it. anything that will you are addicted to. Speaking oh, of sugar, <laughs> um, <laughs> so what I first did is I I did this thing called um, snooze, which is low lacal, low level tobacco, but it was dip, which is disgusting. <laughs> but then I detox from all the chemicals first, then tobacco and nicotine, and then when I was like going crazy, oh. I would do I would go to immediately the gym. Correct. Serotonin and endorphins. You know what I mean? That's incredible. What do you think is the biggest... <laughs> He's decrumming. He's so crummy. Um, what's the biggest issue facing the world today? Greed and stupidity. Okay. If you eliminated that, the life would be a lot better for everybody. And especially in this country, I feel like people are too in the idea of stuff, me, my, mine, instead of like, oh, like what's wrong with having a universal loving world where I have more than enough, but still people can have some. I don't need all. Right. And that to me, and also like ignoring just science and other stuff, I think it's just, it's incredible to me how people choose to not like listen to, you know, I don't know, scientific evidence. And right. Well, that's why, you know, I talk about this with my friend Doug too. Like, I feel like um, if we don't have any sense of spirituality, and I don't care what you call it, the universe, the Schwartz, the something, and puppy. that, and <laughs> the puppy, the unconditional loving world, you know, then it's much harder to uh, combat capitalism. Because I think that, you know, if we're not careful, human beings will believe in something that's just like right in front of them. So we have to be careful what we fill our brains with. Our, you're right. I think stu I love that you said stupidity and greed, not just greed, because greed doesn't just come. It's something you learn, you know? Like, I see people on the train all the time. They're like, everybody's like, mine. As it, Like, if there was a word attached to their bubble, it would be like, leave me. And I walk on the subway, and I'm like, hey! I just want to, like, share and connect. And I always wonder what it would be like if like, you could walk on, if the, the go-to was good morning. You know, I say good morning to 25 people every morning. It's like a thing I do. Mm -hmm. and by the Is it the same person? Good morning, 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 good morning. Good morning. <laughs> no, it's not. Oh, okay. Um, it's, I think stupid, I, I think I should say um, ignorance, not stupidity. Like some people just don't have the tools. I'm not like, anti if you're slow i'm saying if you choose to not Whew. take evidence <laughs> i was feeling judged <laughs> yeah but now i'm not because yeah. i'm slow yeah no i'm not i was mean like that i mean like people that choose to just live in the dark and not like coming out i don't know you're so shy i'm <laughs> so shy i have terrible 80s and 90s references to everything I grew up Is that because you're hungry like the wolf? <laughs> well, your reflex is a lonely. Are you gonna get my number? Eight six seven five three zero nine. Um, you're such a material girl. <laughs> how many? How many? You're like a virgin. <laughs> well, this croissant's like a virgin. It That's is. Okay. <laughs> mm. <laughs> I got an unbelievable impression. It's unbelievable. It's huge, it's the best impression. I do Trump better than Trump, okay? Because I'm from China. Um, now it, now it's because I'm obsessed with everything that's going on, it is Trump. It used to be Casey Kasem, but no one knows who that is. I know who it is. This is Chop 40 with Casey Kasem. It's Casey Kasem saying so long, and keep your socks on. <laughs> I feel like I do impressions of impressions. Like I can't, if I see the person, but if I see someone do the impression, I'm like, oh, I got it. Really? I see what they're accenting. Oh, uh, accenting. Accenting. Yeah. I don't I have to do them right from the Who's your go-to impression? Um, Helen Hunt has always been probably like the one that I, <laughs> I, I, I you know, Paul, it's like I, I just want a normal boyfriend. What um, if this is as good as it gets? Ooh, That's not mine. That's someone else's impression. That, impression. No, that was very, but he has a good ear. <laughs> um, and then, you know, Sandra Bullock was like. Let me hear it. Um, uh, this, it's great to be in the park with you guys. I mean, I don't know if I had enough tea, but okay. That is great. Your face even like morphed into I look Sandra. like her. I get it. I'm no, like it a cross morphed. between Sandra it Bullock morphed. and Lake Bell, okay? I get George Clooney and Brad Pitt a lot. <laughs> no, like, but I really George. do look like 
I really I'm not saying that to butter myself. I actually res I don't I think they're gorgeous. I'm like okay, you know. Yeah. I mean, I know. I'm like yeah. Brad's okay, George <laughs> as a combo of them. I'm so weird. I also have a little Barbara Streisand right here. No, I mean like I would do Cartman from South Park doing his impression oh. of Robert De Niro in Let the movie that, Taxi Driver. I do, I do Celine doing Cartman. Okay, so mine was... Are you talking to me? I see who you guys. That was, so, and then I would keep going. <laughs> keep going. Um, God, this is so long ago. This is like... Like this is the week. Bush years I would do this. Um, so, uh, Billy Bob Thornton from Sling Blade. With Sandra Bullock. Let's do with that. Here we go. Doing his impression of Tom Hanks and Forrest Gump. Life is like a box of chocolates. Mm -hmm. right, like, Let me hear Celine. I'm your lady and you are my man. It's like right in there. And then you just drop the jaw a little and you get Alanis. So, um, we're near for you reach for me. I'm gonna do all that I can. What's the hardest thing you're working on? <laughs> we get right in there. This bagel. In the gonads. Um, what is one thing you're working on right now? Um, right now, I'm working on trying to put out content constantly. So it's like constant content. Yeah, it's like never ending. Run of it. So one of the things I do is I go out in the middle of the freezing it's weather. It's my favorite. Exactly. That's how I fell in love with his comedy. I was like, oh my god, this guy is like Billy on the street, but not angry. And it was. Oh, crazy. I'm angry. But I mean, you don't can't tell. I'm not angry. <laughs> well, stupid question. Um, I yeah, I like to go out and interview people, Which and they don't tend to hear a lot of what I say. So I can say things un, and they just like uh. <laughs> and I also like to do hidden camera stuff, but the problem is I need two camera people because I got some great stuff, but we, like, we miss 90% of it because it's like you need reactions to right. me doing crazy stuff. The reason I asked you the question is because you are very courageous. You, ah! you get up every you. night to do comedy, sometimes multiple times. Mm -hmm. You put yourself out there. You're extremely comfortable in your own skin. You get to do very satisfying like comedy. And there's a lot of people, hopefully, that will watch this that'll say, oh, I wish I could do that. And I think sometimes, you know, even if you're not like the most famous comedian, which I feel like you will be someday. I've been hearing that for 20 years. I'm lucky to have you on my show. But, <laughs> you know, it, I, I made this show so that people, people, not just comedians, but human beings could be like, I, how do I touch that? How do I get there? And sometimes the way to do that is by sharing something that you're working on. It can be emotional, whatever it is, just something so that people aren't just like, oh my God, that guy has like no fear. Like he's, I, I can never be like that. Cause you know, sometimes when we share something that we're going th growing through, it helps connect us, you know? So you don't have to, but. What am I going through? Growing through right now. Is there anything? Yeah, have to work I have to um, <laughs> finish this bagel and um, I have, you know, you talked about spirituality, which we kind of touched on, and it's like, I don't know what I believe, but I know that I'm not in charge, and I know that energetically, if I keep putting out the energy, hopefully it will catch on. But it's a lot of blind faith, and it's a lot of like believing in what you're doing, and it's like, because the trick is you put out good content like this and not to obsess about how many views, how many views, how many views, how many likes, how many views, how many views, how many likes, how many views, how many comments, negative comment, focus on that. Instead, to be like, just going like, I'm gonna keep putting out the energy. Like, I think some of my stuff should be viral. And I'm like, why are there only a thousand? Yes, but I have, what I'm working on is not, it will be like, not like just being like, just keep, and then put your head down and keep doing it. Great. Um, I'm not hugging a tree. Yes, you are. All right. <laughs> I have convictions. We're gonna go hug trees. Then we're gonna... The spirit of the world, the oh great spirit, God, whatever you want to call it, uh, was listening at this very second. Okay. And I have a feeling you've done this before, but like, let's say right now you decided, oh, I believe in God. What would you ask that thing? Why are so many people that claim to believe in you represent you so horribly? And there's no one here because it's freezing. My second question yeah. is, 
If you were a comedian, would your lines be, hey, it's great to be here, but then again, it's great to be everywhere. <laughs> Men have nipples. Uh -uh. Biggest role model right now? You mean like... Like when you think to yourself, oh, I'm having such a hard moment. What would this person do? Who's that person? Okay, so I would say I had a unbelievably spiritual friend named Vic. So spiritual that when he got diagnosed with terminal cancer, his response was, I'm so sorry you had to tell me that. That must have been very stressful for you. That's like, yeah, that kind of a person. So um, what, would I, what would I say? I think that's, that's it. You think about him. Probably. I think about like, what would Vic do? Like, how can you be um, so out of self and so into other people and how can I be of service to other people like Vic to the point where his demise was going to be stressful for someone else and that's what he focused on. WWVD. Thank you, Vic. I want to do a tree hug and you got to come up with a yoga pose or a dance move or both. Let's do it! I did that like awkward like, you know, like when a girl hugs you and she's like, we're not sleeping. She's like... Like sixth grade hug. It's a threesome. <laughs> and this is like grandma hug. My yoga pose is downward bird. I hate yoga. <laughs> there you have it, guys. Thanks for joining us. I hate yoga. And I'm glad you interviewed me. That's a switch. <laughs> Thank you, our watchers. Good night. So All right.